Pete Klupar and Rick Tomlinson, if you'll join me on stage. Hey, Pete. Hi. So, uh, Rick, I think we met in Bulgaria, right? Pete. Is that right? Yes, uh, through Plam and Rusev at Webbit. And, oh, you're going to sit over there. All right, oh, well, great. No, 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 that's okay. I'll, I'll come, I'll sit over here. Uh, whoa. All right. And <laughs> there's a lot of distance in space. Yeah, so there's distance in space. Yeah. So, yes, yes there is. we're going to use some uh, electron tunneling here or something. <laughs> um, so, you started talking about uh, your history in the space race. Um, and, and it was just an, an endless stream of extraordinary stories. So this is going to be a tough question, uh -oh. really, for both of you. And that is, in, in like two minutes, give us an idea of what your deal is in this whole space thing. We'll start with you. I believe that the uh, 100 years we're in right now is probably the most important 100 years, not just in the history of humanity, but the history potentially of life itself, because this is the only planet we know of that has life. Um, and it is during this time that we have exhibited the capability to potentially destroy the planet. But ironically, coming out of that same set of technologies, that same set of people, um, we have the capability not just to save the planet, but to expand the life of the planet to worlds now dead. And I think that's an incredible opportunity. Um, and from that, I've, I've, that's what I wake up in the morning. That's what drives me in the morning. But even as great as our dreams are, or Elon or Jeff's dreams, or, or, or their dreams, the, um, the, the foundation there, it, it's, you still got to make it pay. So uh, every once in a while, I forget how hard it is to, to be in the private sector. And so right now, I'm doing a, a venture capital firm to go raise money right. to help fund entrepreneurs that are going to move into what happens when Jeff and Elon succeed at bringing the cost down to get out there. Because that's, this is almost like the week before the internet when it comes to space. The week before the internet, what does that mean? It means uh, I'm dealing with space engineers, so I'm not going to say the day before because they don't do anything on time. Um, yeah, <laughs> they always say, we're going to launch on this day. It's going to take a little longer. But it is, we're, we're at that, that shift moment. Mm. You know, we're at that shifting moment. It's like, you know, back in the, uh, you, you've got all these wonderful maps and stuff, and there was a period of time where you, you could be at the, the, the party, you know, before, Columbus, uh, before Copernicus, and you'd be the, the, the hero of the ball explaining how the heavenly spheres all rotate around the right. earth. And, right. you know, the day after Copernicus, you're an idiot, <laughs> right? Um, and, and that's kind of where we are right now, I believe, in the opening of space. So which are you? Yeah, which am I? <laughs> Great. So, yeah, that's so, it's coming. So, uh, Pete. Uh, an engineer, uh, the one that's always late, apparently. Yes. <laughs> well, so, you do want it to work, right? Yeah, you want it, you want it to work, especially yeah. if there's somebody inside We can inside deliver it. it on time, yeah. But, yeah. but it may not work. It might blow up. Yeah. So, uh, Pete, give us a sense for your cast in this play. So I work for an organization uh, called the Breakthrough Foundation, which is supported by um, several uh, very wealthy people in Silicon Valley. And our mission is to look for life in the universe. Uh, that means in the solar system and also beyond. And uh, we're divided into uh, several initiatives, um, and they're pretty obvious. The first one is uh, LISTEN, which is a SETI search, is using uh, radio to see if anybody's trying to signal us. Search for extraterrestrial Rescue. intelligence. That's been around right. for decades uh, under... Yeah, Frank Drake started it in the 60s uh, um, with a, a big telescope in uh, Virginia. Right. And, um, yeah, it's been around, and we're spending about $10 million a year uh, using the biggest telescopes, radio telescopes in the world, looking right. for uh, a SETI signal. Then uh, we're also spending about $5 million a year on what we call WATCH, which is a uh, telescopic uh, effort to look for uh, planets that are outside the solar system. So uh, the, closest solar, or the closest star system to the Earth is a star system called Alpha Centauri. And there are two sun-like stars, and we're looking in at the, at that system to see if there's any, um, planets. any planets there. And yeah. so, it, it'd be much like the Tantooine planet that uh, Skywalker came from. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would be because there were two. Remember, there were two stars in that yeah. system. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and so listen, watch, and... And then the, the most uh, famous one is Starshot. I have a video that uh, we... Starshot, yeah, for sure. Um, and so th this is... Uh, this is supposed to be a laser array that's on the ground somewhere in Chile, and we deploy on orbit a uh, laser sail device. That's uh, the star, the star sail, and um, the ground has about 100 gigawatts of power. Uh, goes into the lasers, and they illuminate the sail for between two and five minutes, and it accelerates the spacecraft to 20 percent the speed of light. And that'll take it... 20% the speed of light. 20% the speed of light. And, and this, is, this is a concept that is mathematically sound and yes. the laws of physics as we understand them. We obviously haven't tried it yet. Every, everything works. The biggest challenge... Yeah, physics, physics works. The biggest wow. challenge is the uh, combining the lasers. You're basically combining an infinite number of lasers um, on the order of a trillion. Oh. Um, which sounds outrageous, but years ago we didn't. We used to only have little tiny uh, LED uh, screens, and now we have gigantic uh, displays. I mean, I saw one in the park the other day that was four stories tall. Yeah, but um, Be Bezos can deliver anything in an hour, so yeah, this has got to be yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right. So it takes 20 years to get to uh, the system, and then we spend about a day in system. Um, taking pictures and, and uh, observing. We're only really close, we're only within one AU of the, uh, we're only about the distance. One astronomical unit, unit yeah, us to the sun. sun yeah, um, for about 10 seconds. Wow. Um, so we do all that work, spend all that time, and we get 10 seconds to take pictures, and then we send them back to the Earth uh, using a laser, and that'll take um, about four years, four and a half years. And then, so from the day we, well, from today, we expect to get images back in about 2070. In about 2070. Yeah. So mark your calendars. Yes. We'll be Twin Global <laughs> that's, 2070. That's right. And, wow. that, that's and, and the planning is going on right now because we believe that it's possible to actually do this and yes. we, be we better get started. We haven't found any problems. When we started wow. this, we, we looked at all kinds of different uh, approaches, many of which Rick was involved with in the past, the, the, the uh, fusion rockets or, or many of the different types, and we decided that this, this laser approach was the uh, only one that was affordable and uh, possible, and, and it'll cost about the price of the Large Hadron Collider. Oh, right, yeah. So it's about $10 Europe. billion. Dollars. Yeah. About $10 billion. $10 billion. So it's... Wow. I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's not, it's not like Apollo, which was $100 billion. Yeah, a actually, one of, one of the guys you mentioned out there could actually just decide to write a couple of checks. And, but they, as you said, Rick, this, this stuff, if they say it's $10 billion, it really is going to be $68 billion, right? Uh, no. <laughs> Only if it's no. the government. No. Yeah, yeah, it, no, yeah but, that's interesting. Yeah. So, They're not doing cost plus. So I'm a space fan, but I'm a dilettante. You guys are, are not. Uh, for any space fans here or those that aspire to be so, Rick, what should they be most paying attention to over the next few years? Um, I, I think it really does boil down to largely what, what Jeff and Elon are working on. Um, they are um, the whole key to everything we're talking about. Robert Heinlein once said, a uh, great science fiction writer, 100 miles up and you're halfway to anywhere. So the key to all of this stuff breaking loose <laughs> is getting that 100-mile barrier broken down. And the key to that is being able to treat uh, space Because of flight. gravity, because of, because of gravity. cutting out, yeah. Yeah, you're at the right. top of the gravity well at that point, and you're either going flat or down from there. Okay. Um, and the, uh, the key to that is treating space flight the way you do uh, air flight. In other words, Imagine if you flew here from Indonesia, let's say, and uh, on the way here, your, your aircraft uh, dropped all the pieces so that you arrived in a pod. And then when you got here, they had to rebuild the entire airplane before you could go back. So there wouldn't be a lot of air travel going on. Um, and that's, that's the way we've been treating space, because it's been a military, they didn't care. Uh, but now we're looking at, um, being able to reuse everything. So, right. so for us, and I, I kind of call it 
space porn is if you watch, uh, if you watch that, that Let's landing. Let's turn off the streaming, yeah, I'm please. sorry. For all the kids? <laughs> for the kids? No, but when you watch the landing of those SpaceX boosters, yeah. after they flew into space, deposited a satellite, and then they came back and did a pinpoint landing. For those of us in the field, it's like, oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, yeah. So that's the thing. Well, and, 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 and it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's so exciting at this moment. I, I was born the year of this. This is a German representation of all the missions up to, was created right after Apollo 1969. That's a beautiful representation. I was just a few months old on the floor crying during the landing as my parents were trying to watch. But now we're going from kings and monarchs being the ones who can fund to we're starting to get to the super wealthy, not quite kings, who can really get big into it. Dukes. And then investors who, you know, they've had some resources. You got them getting to sign the form. But, but can you make any money at this over the next five or seven years? We believe you can, and you know, we're tracking with Space Fund uh, several companies. I'll, I'll give you one, um, uh, which, which he knows about. The, um, they're called Made in Space. Made in Space. Made okay. in Space. These are the guys that flew the first 3D printer on the space station. Um, they're working on, uh, and I think they've gotten some samples back, of fiber optics that have been created in zero G. And if you think about it, when you're making fiber optics, if you're in a gravitation field, some of, them, some of the molecules will be a little askew, and that slows down the efficiency of the light traveling through the fi fiber optic. In space, you can make them perfect, which gives you uh, a multiple of x, I'm not sure what it is, of efficiency for yeah. fiber optics, which really starts to add up. So I'm sure they're talking to Dow Corning or, or somebody like that right now. So that's an obvious one. Right. Um, and that's something that comes back to the Earth, which was... So that's sort of a first phase of stuff we can do nearby, bring it back, and make some money from that. And then right. later we're going to need some made-in-space stuff to do stuff in space. Yeah, they've already made the first wrenches. So, for example, rather than um, if they have a problem, like, you know, like on Apollo 13, you know, um, the, uh, of course they'll have duct tape. But, right. um, or yeah. gorilla tape, I guess, whatever. <laughs> Whoever sponsors it because it's no. private sector. Uh, but... Um, you know, they can, they can actually just send the data to build the tool yeah. and build it on location. Right. Or build the right. spacecraft. Or, build or the even spacecraft. build the spacecraft. Absolutely. Right. So uh, we're coming up on, on time, and, and I urge you to find these two gentlemen during the break, uh, uh, after the program or beyond. Um, I, I have a really important question for each of you. Who is going to get to Mars first, Pete or Rick? <laughs> I, I, I'm not going. You're not going. I'm not going. So you're sort of risk averse. Y yeah, and uh, but you know, it's a big bomb. You got to get climb up on top of a big bomb. Yeah, that's true. It's and not they, really and appealing. Then they light it. Yeah. It's not really appealing when you think about it. Yeah. So it sounds, Rick, you're up. Um, you know what? I, I I'm not destination oriented. I, you know, I, I <laughs> really I don't care. I don't care. It's all of the above to me. I don't whether I don't want to go to the you know whether it's the moon, Mars. I'm ready to go. We'll send a couple of young Turks first, uh, and they can check it out. Uh, sure I don't mind going. I think it'd be great for retirement, living in a place yes. with one-third gravity, right? Well, with that notion, uh, Esther Dyson, our, our good friend, has been here a couple of times. I asked her, and she said, I want to retire on Mars. And I said, oh, well, you want to retire on Mars? Why is that? And she said, well, first of all, I've always wanted to go to another planet. And it's the <laughs> closest one. It's the one we've got the best shot. And second... I got to retire there because once you get there, you sure ain't coming you back. You ain't coming back. <laughs> so, um, Rick and Pete, this is great. Listen, watch, star shots. I, when, when your colleague Pete Warden in Bulgaria mentioned um, we've got a competition to, to say how do we get to 30% the speed of light, I sort of I spit my coffee out and I said, what's this guy talking about? But yeah, that's what we have to be asking. We have to be trying to figure out, and might as well start now. Rick Tomlinson, 100 years, most important 100 years in the history of the planet, whether we have another 100 years or not, could be determined in this 100 years. And 100 miles up, you're halfway to anywhere. Thanks, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you.